protector, 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 protector. Protector, protector, protector. Protector, protector, protector. Protector, protector. Wave your hands to heaven and begin to call them. Healer, a savior, protector, the healer of your soul, the provider. Say, Father, you are the provider. Provide for me this morning. Open your mouth and speak to your father. Say, Jesus, I call you. Holy Spirit, I call you. Father, I call you this morning. I have come to you father i have run to you father i have gone with my expectations open your mouth and speak to your father this morning jesus we welcome you holy spirit we welcome you you are our protector you are our provider you are the little hands of our hands father in the name of jesus christ lord we come to you this morning jesus have your way open your mouth and say lord have your way in my situations. Have your way in my life. Direct my path, oh Lord. Direct my path, oh Lord. Let your peace, let your peace that passes all human understanding. Direct my mind, direct my heart, and put me through, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and speak to your God this morning. My holy Lacandereboscha, Le Kekendereboscha, Ibaba Baba Koroboshi in the Yaba, my holy Lakin de Yikarabosha, the Kikayabashandere, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, take authority. Holy Spirit, take control this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to take authority. Between 50 miles away from the north, 50 miles away from the south, 100 miles away from the east, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no weapon of the enemy shall come around us. No weapon of the enemy shall come around dwell our dwelling places. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have come to the Zion. We have come to the Zion. We have come to the Zion. Let the angels of God let it let it be over this place. In the mighty in the name of Jesus Christ, we call for the angels. We call for the angels to be around here this morning to be part of this service. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray, Holy, oh for the people that's gonna be on their way, Father. The people that still coming, oh Lord. People that still driving, Father. The Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will quicken their steps, oh Lord. You will quicken their steps, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, quicken their steps, Father. Quicken their steps, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and say, Lord, quicken everyone's steps. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the one that is sick. Everyone that is called sick, that is at home, that is called weak. We release the strength of God. Because you are our healer, even unto them this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everyone, oh Lord, that will be watching online, Father, let the power of God let it visit them, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, because there is no distance in the spirit, in the spirit realm. And so, Father, we tap into that grace and we commit the senior pastor as he brings the word, oh Lord. Oh Open his mouth, Father, and fill it up with your power. Open his mouth, oh Lord, and fill it up with your power, with your anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, to set loose, to liberate him. In the name of Jesus Christ, the word that will change the world, that will turn situations around. Father, you will release unto us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, Father, I pray, oh Lord, as many that their heart is not here, I cancel every spirit of destruction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of buying and selling in the spirit. Father, I cancel them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we remain focused on you. We remain focused on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you. This Service is open in the name of the Father. Yes, it is open in the name of the Son. It is open in the name of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's welcome the choir. Put your hands together for them.
Shedere Bosha. Only you. Only you. Kandara Boshe de Boshaya. Only you. Aga. Only you. from 1 to 6. I will take that prayer point briefly. It says now when they had escaped they found out that her island was called Malta. And I will jump to verse 3. It says but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks it was Paul that gathered the bundle of that sticks. I want you to go with me in the spirit. He himself gathered that bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. He gathered the sticks, laid the same sticks on the fire. And guess what the Bible says came out of it? A viper came out of it. This is something he did himself. Nobody helped him to do it. He gathered the sticks. He put them together. And he laid them on the fire. All of a sudden, a viper showed up. What happened between gathering the sticks laid it down and somehow a viper showed up. Brethren, I have something to tell you. The time that's hitting you is part of what you gathered yourself. You gather them. You try to make it work. But somehow a viper to hurt you came from that same thing you gathered. The Bible says he came out because of the eat and the fasting of his hand. I want you to pray this prayer. There's some things the people you've loved, the people you've helped, the people you gather together, you helped to make sure everything is okay. But it turned out to be the same viper to hurt you. To put you down. To destroy you. To destroy your legacy. To destroy things that God has put together in your hand. I want you to pray this prayer. And say, Father. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father. Father. 
Say half time is said, Father. Say half time is said, Father. Every viper in my life, every viper in my life that is said to hurt me, the Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let your fire expose them. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth. Father, every viper, every viper in my family that they feel that they look like a friend they look that they feel like a family in the name of Jesus Christ Lord begin to expose them begin to expose them begin to expose them you expose the viper of the life of the of the past life he came out he got out but the viper came out and the bible says the fire consumed them open your mouth and say father let your fire let it consume every viper that's trying to hurt me. Every viper that I call my best friend. Every viper that look at me and they are looking at me jealously. Open your mouth and say, Father, let your fire consume them. Let your cavalry expose them wherever they have, Father. Wherever they might be, Father. Wherever they who are they have, Father. Let your fire hold on and expose them. Every viper of my destiny. Every viper of my ministry. Every viper of my life. In the life of my children. In the love of my family members, in the love of my church members, in the love of every covenant family. Father, expose them, Father, expose them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the viper, they will not be hurt, they will not hurt you, they will not hurt me, they will not hurt your life, they will not hurt the life of your children in the mighty name. Of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father, for the exposures of every evil ones in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless and we worship you. We give you glory, we give you honor. Wave your hands to heavens and begin to celebrate God for destroying every of their weapons, for destroying every of their weapons. Wherever they gather together to hurt you, they will not be able to come around you because your life has turned to fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever wants to touch you has to go through Jesus Christ. And guess what? And the Bible says Jesus is a consuming fire. He will consume everyone's all up that has set aside to hurt you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, King of Glory. We bless and we worship you in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen put your hands together celebrate god one more time and give him glory in the mighty name of jesus christ when i woke up this morning the lord i was very first thing the bible was the god the lord almighty gave me and i began to wonder where did this how come you gather and all of a sudden showed up and the lord said to me those but the situation of many of us what we go through all of a sudden it just came from nowhere and you begin to wonder asking yourself so what do I do and the Lord will have me to tell you all you need to do is go to your closet and cancel cancel that every viper if after you destroy them say God expose them because one God you see it then you know how to run away and God Almighty will protect you. He put a hedge of protection around you and your household. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Celebrate God one more time. Celebrate God one more time. It is well with you in Jesus' mighty name. Today is a very interesting service. We're going to go with the flow as a flow of the Holy Spirit. It's something that we've been praying about. And I know God will indicate you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is a week to our DDC, the 70th year anniversary of this ministry. And we've been praying, we've been fasting, and God has been speaking. And I don't take the month of October lightly. I take it very personal and I take it very serious. For people that know me, I hardly actually, I call less, I talk less, I whatever that is going to make me fall to that level, I, I stay away as much as possible. And God has been really, really, really speaking. And I just want to give glory to God Almighty. So for those of you that have not joined and are fasting, we have one week left. Don't stay away. The flight is flying. Is taking off. Join. If it's just one meal, fast one meal. If you can do two meals, 
Why not? But if you know your strength is not enough to carry it through, just, you know, take your medication, but make sure when you fast, you pray and you read the word of God. If you don't do, you don't pray and you don't read the word of God, guess what? You are just turning it to starvation. It's not, it's not, it has no power. There's no power in it. Hallelujah. And you, your prayer will not be called turn to starvation in the name of Jesus Christ. So, um, briefly, we're going to move things around a little bit. We take the ministration from the choir briefly. Then we will, um, Take the offering while we are doing the ministrations. Then we'll um, call on pastor for the message. Then after message, then he will release the word of God, the prophetic word of God. And we set to go out for evangelism. So we're going to go and win the soul and bring them to Christ. Hallelujah. He said, go to the, to the freeway, the highway, <clears throat> and compel them. Hallelujah. Your testimonies, my testimonies, will compel these people to bring them to Christ. And as we evangelize in our neighborhood, God will take care of our home business in the name of Jesus Christ. And then we'll now return back to church for thanksgiving and prayer. And God will help us and guide us as we go in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you that watch me with us for the first time, this is Covenant of Faith Family Ministries with people of God that God has put together. We believe in families. We are not religious. We are more of spiritual. Hallelujah. We are a family. If you're looking for a family, pretty much this is a place for you to be. There's no toe neck to step on. If you present... Um, you giving me offense most time i won't take it so when they present it to you don't take we don't take offenses here we just let the spirit of god lead and guide and protect us hallelujah so this is this is a place to be if you don't have a ministry if you don't have a church home make yourself comfortable as much as possible and god almighty will change and turn your life and your situations around in the mighty name of jesus christ so we meet on mondays on zoom for bible studies from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And on Wednesday, we meet here, Sanctuary, for midweek service. And everyone that comes to midweek service, they will never be weak in the name of Jesus Christ. So find time to join the midweek service crew. We know ourselves. It looks like we are the same people that come every, every time. No wonder the Lord is renewing our strength differently. Hallelujah. So join the midweek service. Let's continue to join and God will help you and hide in the name of Jesus Christ. If you know anybody that wants to join the choir, choir meets every Saturdays, 2 p.m. for choir rehearsals. We meet again on Wednesdays after service, 8 p.m. for about one hour for practice. And Sundays, you see the glory of God and the manifestation of power of Holy Spirit. And that will be your testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. And our Sunday service starts at from 10 to 10.30 for Bible study. And we do 10.30 to 10.50 for prayer of uh, uh, consecrations. Very powerful, very refreshing. This morning was very glorious. So for those of you that came late... Um, you know, you've missed a lot. So next week, don't, don't be, don't sit at home. Come and be refreshed. Press the reset button and you see God resetting everything that's in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. If there's any other uh, announcement, pastor will let us know after this service. God bless you. Remain seated and enjoy the service. Amen. Amen. Romans 8 says, there is now, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and nothing can separate us from the love of God. So we sing this song, see the light, and we see the light of God's love. We see the light of his saving grace and that we can be saved in him. And no matter what happens, the grip of fear will have no hold on us. For he is in control, he has the authority, and he has the power. We remain in him. Amen. Arise, my soul. Remember this. He took my sin. And he buried it No longer I who live Now Jesus
Jesus lives in me for I was dead to sin but I woke up to see the light no I this morning for the reality of our sonship that we know who we are we are no longer a slave to sin we are no longer in the darkness but we are now in the light of God we are now sons and daughters of the most high God thank you for your redeeming grace that saved us that restored us and on this covenant day of restoration we pray that everything that pertains to our life to our destiny shall be restored back even unto its glorious Amen. state in the name of Jesus. Amen. You said in your word that the glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our habitation. The devil came and we lost that status. But you came to restore us all that the enemy has taken away. Say so he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you came to give life and give it in abundance. Thank you, Lord. Receive all our worship this morning. Amen. And let your name alone be praised. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like we've been told, let's, let's package our offering right now. We should have done this during the worship, but um, we weren't well guided in that. 
So let's package our offering and bring it forward. Today is an abridged service. And the Lord will have us do things in a different way a little bit today. So let's package an offering to the Lord. If you have that ready, just lift it up. Everybody rise up. Offering or no offering, just rise up with, on your feet. And just lift up your hands with your offering and just speak to the Lord. If we may just honor God, if you are able to walk into this service, then you can stand up for a minute. Please. Let's all rise up. Lift up your hands with your offering. And just speak a word to it right now. Father Lord, we thank you for the grace and the ability to, to give this at your altar. Lord, let breathe upon this seed in my hands and let it produce bounty harvest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. And let your name alone be glorified. Even in this seed in my hand, so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Let's sit down. Quite, uh, ushers just pass the plate around for the sake of time. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah. Please let's be focused and let's just allow the ushers to do what they, they know how to do best. Hallelujah. Please permit me this morning to specially welcome us to our pre-Destiny Discovery Conference 2022 worship service, and which is also our covenant day of restoration. Somebody say covenant day of restoration. God is not a man that he will lie. Neither is he the son of man that he will repent. As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoken it, and shall he not make it good? Numbers 23, 19. He has spoken that today is your day of restoration. And I pray it shall restore all that pertains to you and your family in the name of Jesus. On this covenant day of restoration, just lift up your hand and say, Jesus, I desire your touch. Your touch of supernatural recovery. Your touch of supernatural restoration. Go ahead, receive that touch right now. Receive it. Reach out to me by your word today. Reach out to me by your word today. Lord, I shall be restored. I shall be recovered. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, we worship you. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 25, that I shall restore all the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and my ag that, that, that they have eaten, no matter what has been eaten in your life, no matter the lost time you have suffered concerning your destiny, the Lord says it shall restore today in the name of Jesus. Say with me, I am a child of destiny. I refuse to live like a destitute. I am a child of destiny. 
I have an enviable destiny in Christ. I have a glorious destiny in Christ. Therefore, I shall be free from every shame, from every reproach in the name of Jesus. You know, Romans chapter 8 verse 29 paints a picture of God's redemption agenda for our lives. He said, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, your redemption is to share the same DNA with Christ. You are redeemed to share the same nature with Christ. He said that we may be conformed to the image of the, of the Son of God. And it will be the firstborn in your family. Hallelujah. We are meant to carry the same blood group with Jesus Christ. So whatever cannot run, cannot affect Jesus, cannot affect you. Firstborn among many brethren. Meaning, same DNA denote the same order of life, same potential, same capacity. We are predestinated to share same order with Christ. So whatever cannot affect Christ cannot affect you. Get this understanding clear. In Romans chapter 8 verse 30, it went further to say, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And them that he called, he also justified. And those that he justified, he also has glorified. So your predestination is to hand in glorification. Not to hand in shame. Not to hand in reproach. Your calling... The call of God, when you say, Lord, I follow. When you say yes to the call, that part is to lead you to glory and not to shame. So if anything represents shame, pain, groaning in your life, this morning they shall be caused to the root in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I cross every issue of shame and reproach ravaging your life this morning in the name of Jesus. Say with me, I've been redeemed to be glorified. I'm not, I've not been redeemed for shame. I've not been redeemed for reproach. But I've been redeemed and called to glory and to virtue. According to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, I'm setting this stage so that you know who you are. And when you know who you are, you will not be confused by the enemy. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertains to what? Life and to godliness. Godliness is having the nature of God. He said he has predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his son. And to live because he is the firstborn. Jesus is your firstborn. And that means you have the same nature. 
So he has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him. And that's why knowledge is crucial. If you don't know who you are, the devil will tell you who you are not. And you believe it. And you begin to live as who you are not. Because that is what the devil presents to you. The Bible says if there's this proverb that while princes are walking on the floor, slaves are riding on the horses. Why? Because they don't know. He said that has called you. He has called you to what? To glory and to what? To virtue. That is who you've been called into. You have a glorified destiny in Christ. Somebody say, I have a glorified destiny in Christ. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 28. Say, and we as brethren, and we brethren as Isaac are the children of promise. You and I, we are the children of promise. So we have the same enviable destiny as Christ because Isaac went forward, he became great, and the Philistines envied him. The same way, you know, Genesis chapter, chapter 26, Genesis chapter 26, verse 14, say Isaac went forward, he became great, and the Philistines envied him. And the Bible is saying that you have the same nature, you, have, you are like Isaac. So, you have been you are meant to be envied not to be pitied and so from today every pitiable issues in your life surrounding your life today shall be turned into a testimony in the name of jesus stay with me i am a child of destiny Genesis 26, 14. He said, we are like Isaac. And because Isaac went forward, he became great to the extent that the Philistines began to envy him. So don't be surprised when people start to envy you because God is going to turn your life around. They might envy you, but they will not be able to stop you. They might envy you, but they will not be able to hinder you. They tried to stop Isaac. They were blocking his wealth, blocking his wealth, but he was continuing to move forward until he got to a place where they said, no, here, this is my real boat. Here, I find rest. I say you will get to a place of rest in your life, in your destiny, in the name of Jesus. Every issue of anxiety, every issue of, of trouble, of storm, shall begin to cease in your life, in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. amen. So this morning I shall be bringing us a message I titled, Pathway. To restoration of your glorious destiny. Pathway to restoration of your glorious destiny. We've established that you have a, a glorious destiny. That you have an enviable future. That you have a mounted top destiny that cannot be hid. That you've not been called to shame. You've not been called to reproach, but there is a pathway to it. In Psalm 5, verse 12, say, Thou shalt show me the path of life. Thou shalt show me, oh, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous, 
and went up past me. And another scripture said, Thou shalt show me the path of life in his right hands. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And in his right hands, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Let's open to 1 Samuel. Chapter 9, verse 3. Pathway to the restoration of my glorious destiny. And, and the houses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish, who is Saul's father, said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee and arise, go seek the horses. We are all familiar with the story of Saul, the son of Kish, who went after the father's missing donkey. They went through the land of Israel for three days and three nights. And they couldn't find it. But eventually, they came into collision with Prophet Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 to 2, it said, Where Samuel anointed him to reign, said, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be the captain over his inheritance? And in verse 2, he said, When thou depart from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin in Zexa. And they will say unto you, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father has left the care of the asses and so it for you, saying, what shall I do for my son? You know, there are many people in this world today who are mildly living by random motion. A life that is headed in no direction in particular. A life that is more like an experiment. Survivor existence. But what is the plan? That is not the plan of God for, for you. Because God said, before I formed thee, I knew thee. Before thou came forth from the womb, I already ordained thee for a particular assignment. There's a specific calling for your life. There's a vision, there's a purpose God created you for. You are not a biological accident. Your parents might have gotten you by mistake, but you are not a mistake. You might have come from a dysfunctional family, but your life is not meant to be dysfunctional. God knew you and he ordered your steps. We see in this scripture that we read in 1 Samuel that Saul started a journey that ended him the king of Israel. A journey that gave him a glorious life. A journey that restored his glorious destiny. The Bible says the glorious high throne from the beginning is a place of your habitation. So there is a throne of glory waiting for you. And Saul began a journey that brought him to that glorious throne. And I say as you live here today go and restore. And as he was on that assignment for his father there he was able to locate his own glorious throne. You know, since the Old Testament, we know that the, 
the old testament is a shadow of the new so what the earthly father was to saw is what our heavenly father is to us now the father's assignment is key to recovery and restoration of your destiny the father assignment is the key to fulfillment of god's purpose for our life and i want you to know that if Saul had remained at home just like his other brothers were because he was not the only son to teach if he had remained at home and said no dad i'm too busy dad i have so many things to do i cannot go looking for for any asses that are lost you know he wouldn't have encountered the anointing he wouldn't have encountered the, the samuel and he wouldn't have been enthroned into his glorious destiny inside the father's assignment is man's consignment inside the father's assignment is man's consignment inside the assignment of the father is the consignment of man there's something you are looking for that is only locatable in the assignment of the father the way of service is the way of success serving the father can i ask you a question where was david before the oil that made him king located him he was on his father's assignment tendering to the sheep at the shepherd's field he was serving his father when all his brothers were at home relaxing the anointing was waiting for him at to come from his father's assignment if you are on assignment your consignment must locate you if you believe that say it loud amen you know many of us are recipients of diverse oil and grace breakthroughs because of a total don donation to the service of the father totally donated lord wherever you want send me i am available whatever you need send me lord i am available and as we are going on that assignment god was adding grace and value to our life and to our destiny many of us have been blessed with talent and gifts that we are meant to use to totally donate ourselves to god but we are seeking other ways to use those talents and we're struggling with it but when we totally donate that our talent our treasures our our time god has a way of bringing it back and leading you to who you are and giving you your glorious destiny going on your father's assignment is a pathway for restoration of your glorious destiny hallelujah so said here i am send me he donated himself 
And as he was looking for those lost asses, there he met with his own destiny. In Genesis chapter 36, in verse 24, say, And these are the children of Zebion. Both Aja and Anna. Genesis 36, 24. This was that Anna found the moles in the wilderness as he fed the asses of his of Zebion, his father. Anna found something why he was taking care of his father's asses in the in the wilderness while you while looking after his father's flock. He found what he was not looking for. He found a moose as he was looking after his father's business. My dear brothers and sisters, inside your service for your father is your supply on earth. Serving God pays and it pays big. In your service of the Father, there lay in your rewards. In Luke chapter 22, verse 35, Jesus speaking. When I sent you without pause, scripts and shoes, lack ye anything? And he said nothing. As you go on your father's assignment, may you not lack anything concerning your life and destiny in the name of Jesus. When you go for God, you are going for good. Say goodness and mercy will follow you. All the days of your life. When you, go in for, when you go for God, you are going for good. Those who work for God attract his wages. So the way to destiny restoration begins with the father's assignment. It worked for Saul. It worked for David. And it shall work for you. In the name of Jesus. And the truth is, if you want to end glorious, you need to take God serious. Many people are casual about the things of God. If you want to end up glorious, you need to take God's assignment serious. So we shall be going on the Father's assignment this morning. There are lost souls out there. There are lost souls out there. And the, the Father is saying like he said to Saul, go and seek the lost asses. And I know as you go to seek those lost asses, those lost souls, there you will encounter your own glorious and recover your own glorious destiny in the name of Jesus. And how did Jesus do it? In Luke chapter 10 verse 1. He said, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two 
before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great. Just continue to follow me, brethren. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the love of harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Somebody say, I am a laborer in the harvest of the Lord. I present myself as a laborer in the harvest feed of the Lord. And every laborer is worthy of his wage. And I will not be denied my wage in the name of Jesus. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs are most full. Say, carry neither pearls, nor scripts, nor shoes. Salute no man by the way. Don't get distracted. Don't say, oh, I need to have this. I need to have this before I go. Those are excuses. He said, carry nothing. You don't need anything. You just need your mouth. And my presence. He says, and into whatever house you enter first say peace be to this house and if the son of peace be there your peace shall rest upon it it shall turn if not it shall turn to you again meaning you carry peace with you whatever has been troubling you Whatever has been an issue of concern in your life, the Lord says that there shall be a turn around in the name of Jesus. But one thing is this. I know not everybody who will go because some people will have excuses. The same thing happened with, with Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, reading down from verse uh, 23, 22 to 20. Let's read from verse 59 to 62. He said unto another, follow me. And the other said, look, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord. But, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said, no one puts his hand on the plow and looks back. Is fit for the kingdom. I want you to rise up on your feet right now. Rise up on your feet and speak to the Lord. Cancel every form of excuse as you donate yourself to the service of the Father. Cancel every form of excuse. Lord, as I go, go with me. Speak to the Lord. Use me, Lord, to recover your lost souls, the lost souls. And as I go, Lord, Restore my own glorious destiny. As I re help recover lost souls, then in my own glorious destiny shall be restored. Open your mouth and pray. Ask God to help you. 
cancel every form of excuse that the enemy may want to throw into you. Oh, I am busy. I can't do this. I have things to do. For whatever form of excuse that the enemy may want to pretend. No. Jesus said, no one who has put his hand on the plow is fit to look back. Is permitted to look back. You must follow the assignment of the father. Because therein lies your consignment. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, we will be set to go. We, we will be going in f- maybe f- four or five cars. How many people wants to donate their vehicle to carry people? Just rise up, lift up your hand. You want to donate your car. If you brought a car and you would like to carry at least some people in your car so that we can form a group. Sister, yes, Sister Faye, any other person you want to donate your car? Huh? What? We will decide where we will go, but we will come back here. We are not going home. We'll come back here to receive the prophetic declaration. So we come back here to finish up. We're going to be gone for like 30 minutes. Then we'll come back by one and we'll finish up. Praise the Lord. So if you are available uh, so that we can divide people into groups, uh, we don't need to, so that people can stay, we'll take about four or five cars. And we decide the different areas we want to go. And um, where's the T-shirt? We're going to go with our T-shirt. So if you, have, if you don't have your T-shirt, go ahead and get one now. we we'll change into that so that we look corporate. Don't you like this T-shirt? Look at the back. You love it? Sister, can you bring this t-shirt there so people can pick it up and uh, get ready to go? Let's do this quickly so that by... But please make sure you come back for the prophetic prayers and declaration. It's very important. Let's get a t-shirt. Uh, you just pick it up. I think there is a token that is needed. There are different sizes. Let's go corporately. Hallelujah. Let's do that quickly. Sister Nicole will be leading a group. Sister Faye, a group. Sister Diane Foster will lead a group in a car. Another group will follow me. Another group will follow Sister uh, Kemi. There's a token for the T-shirt. That's part of your support of the process of this, of this program. See it as a way of supporting the program. God bless you as to do that. Every time you are, we are called upon on the Father's assignment, is the pathway to restoration. Is a pathway to glory. Let's let's be part of this. We're going to be using this also for the program on Friday and Saturday. Next, uh, starting for the Destiny Discovery program that is starting on the twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirty. 
that t-shirt. So make sure you get one. So when we come back, we'll have the prophetic prayer, then we can go have lunch in, our conf- in, the, in the conference room. So we might be going to